For many calligraphers, the easiest script style to learn is italics. Calligraphers find the simple yet elegant strokes provide a good structure for learning more complex styles. The easiest for me was the italic alphabet, which is, um, you know, probably most similar to handwriting than anything else. And that's part of what I like about it and part of what's difficult about it at the same time is getting the basics down until it becomes a rhythm to yourself and then you can kind of just take off from there once you know it. You can also kind of um, you know put your own personality into the italic hand as opposed to Roman capitals where it's very strict and um, you have to be very careful so uh, you know maybe it's just that it was a lot more fun than doing Roman capitals. My favorite alphabet is uh, for a, a book hand would be an italic. Any, any variation of italic, I do a lot of variations of italic. Well, you know, the easiest part about calligraphy is it, it's enjoyable. And uh, if you enjoy something, you can spend hours about it. Italics were first used in the 15th to 16th centuries. They owe their shape and form to the chancery hand, which was created during the Renaissance. To get started, you'll need lined paper, a broad-edged nib, pen, and ink. Try to find the right size pin for the size letter you want to make. It may help to have some tracing paper available to see the progress and letter shapes you'll be creating. For calligraphy, posture is important. Sit comfortably. Place both feet flat on the floor and lean slightly forward. The key to creating beautiful letters is in the hand and pen position. Keep the pin at an approximate 45 degree angle for the start of each letter. Arms and forearms should be on the writing surface. Ink flow is important in creating a smooth letter. If you're using an ink well, you don't need to dip the pin for each letter. You should be able to do a group of letters before the pin runs dry. The four lines are the ascender line, the waist line, the base line, and the descender line. Before getting started, it's important to understand the size of the letter you're making. The five squares on a diagonal on the left side of the paper represent the nib widths of the pen. This helps in determining the height of each letter. Letter heights are referred to in pen widths because height-weight relationship is extremely important. The correct size for a small letter is five pen widths. Ascenders are five widths above the waistline and descenders are five widths below the baseline. We'll begin with ten lowercase letters that will be the basis for you to move on to the more difficult lower and uppercase letters. To help make the learning easier, we've chosen to present the simplest lowercase letters in the alphabet to get started. The lowercase letter I is the ideal letter to start with due to its size and simplicity. Hold your pen at approximately a 45 degree angle to begin the letter. Pen angle refers to the angle the thin starting stroke will make with a horizontal line. Once you begin, you don't have to lift your pen when making this letter. The second stroke is to create the dot. How you create the dot is optional. You can either make a diamond shaped dot or create a thin line with the edge on the pin. Both techniques can work well. The letter O is called the mother of the alphabet. It most clearly defines the character of the alphabet. The letter O, in the case of the italic hand, is elliptical and has a slight forward slant. The letter is done with two strokes. The letter U is done with one stroke. To better understand the space between the lines, it may be helpful to practice with lined paper under the worksheet. The letter H begins just below the ascender line. It is done without lifting the pin. As you begin, apply some pressure for downstrokes and ease up when stroking away or up. This creates the graceful finish to each letter.
The J is created using two strokes. The essence of the italic alphabet is found in the contrast of the thick and thin strokes made by the broad-edged pen or calligraphic marker. The dot can be finished in much the same way as the dot on the I was done, by guiding your pen from above the letter into a short downstroke. Remember your posture as you are practicing. This will help in creating good form. If you're comfortable, it will help you to concentrate on the letter forms. The F is the longest letter. You start at the ascender line, begin your stroke, place your pen down on the paper and guide it to the left. By keeping the pen at a 45 degree angle, the stroke will become thick as you guide it all the way down to the descender line and continue on to the left for the finishing touch. Now, let's go from the longest letter to one of the shortest letters. The R is done without lifting the pen. Start at the waistline. Watch for the smooth transition from thick to thin. Once you reach the baseline, begin the stroke up, then branch out to the right for the last part of the letter, finishing with approximately the same angle you started with. You may have noticed as you manipulate your pen, the angle varies slightly from the 45 degree angle. This pen angle variation becomes more noticeable as the pen moves into the curves and flourishes. The T is done with two strokes. Begin the first stroke just above the waistline. The cross stroke should be slightly thinner than the down stroke for the T to look its best. The pen is held at less than a 45 degree angle to achieve the stroke. Manipulate the pen to a lesser angle to create the narrow cross stroke. The L is done in one stroke without lifting the pen. As you begin, don't use excessive pressure on the pen or paper. Maintain the correct pen angle to guide the pen into the thin line to finish the letter. The M and N are both done without lifting your pen. A thin lead line should guide into the letter. Then apply some pressure for the downstroke. Gently guide the pen upward into an arch that leads into the next downstroke. Create a smooth transition as the pen goes into the arch. There should be a smooth transition like the branching of a tree. It may help you to review your progress after each letter. Pause the tape between letters and practice a few times. Next, we will look at some capital letters. The uppercase A, B, and C are the three to begin practicing. Capital letters are seven to seven and a half pen widths high. The A is done in four strokes. Remember to hold your pen at approximately a 45 degree angle to begin the letter. Keep the ink flow uniform. The B is done with three strokes. After practicing rows of individual letters, the next step is to combine these letters into simple words. Try Hint of Fun or Hut on Hill. Work on rhythm and continuity. Keep a 45 degree angle on the pen constant. To help the word spacing, put an invisible E between words. Whatever pen size you use will determine the height on your letters. Five pen widths for lowercase letters without ascender or descender. All the letters on these samples you've seen demonstrated were done using a C2 speedball nib and black ink. The speedball textbook is a good guide to get you started. Another good source is the Letter Arts Review a quarterly magazine that is dedicated to the advancement of the lettering arts and artists around the world. If you're interested in studying more complicated letter forms, 
there are many local calligraphy guilds across the country that can assist in finding information regarding classes in your area. This program has shown only a small part of the influences of calligraphy. Calligraphers are constantly innovating to create memorable art that inspires the world. With your individual style and letter forms you create, you can leave your mark on your world.